getting the pitch perfect is always difficult. But the first thing you have to do is bring the people that you're pitching to into your world. So as a startup, you're so excited, you know, you're passionate about what you're doing and you are completely lost in that world. And the other people in the room can be complete strangers to it and have no idea. So it's really important to build the story carefully to make sure those people you're pitching to are included in it. To do your research on who those people you're pitching to are. Uh, for instance, if you're uh, pitching something that's quite high tech, well, and your investors are not, well, make sure you're speaking their language. So you've got to connect with them and also know their own background because also we don't want to be spoken to as if we're three-year-olds either. Yes. So it's, it's really important to bring the investors on the journey as part of the story and to not get lost in the excitement. I really feel for some people, they're so rehearsed, 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 you know, their poor dog is ears are bleeding, they're sick of hearing the pitch and then once they get in front of us they kind of go, they either get really really nervous or they talk so quickly. It, you know it's just a conversation, we're all just people, if it wasn't for 15 years I'd be on the other side pitching myself. So you know it's only a moment in time, we're all just people. You know ideas are pretty cheap. There's lots and lots of ideas and one thing I find quite amusing and interesting is how many people are pitching me now. Uh, like literally my son's friends will pitch me, what do you think about this? Um, and you know it might well be an interesting idea but an idea isn't a business. And what we've seen the most I think is how do we commercialise those products or how and not necessarily the person with the idea is the best person to run a business. It may be that the, an enterprise could license um, or promote the products or, or distribution. You know, it's not it's not linear. And just because you've come up with an idea does not mean you're going to be a founder, and definitely doesn't mean that you're going to be an ultimate CEO of a, of a of a large enterprise. And knowing who you are as a leader, knowing your strengths and what, and also knowing what you really want to do is really important as part of that journey. Doing the work on yourself first of working out why you want to do something is really important because you can give your whole life to something. Well, one of the pictures we saw recently in the Shark Tank was a tech application and this guy had spent $600,000 of his, of his hard earned life savings on this and he'd never shown it to a customer. Um, and I just, I felt so deeply sad for him. Not that it may or may not be a success, but there was just something clearly missing that $600,000 is a lot of money to spend on anything that no customer has yet said, yes, I will pay money for that. Uh, so I think it's really important to stay in touch with what you want to do, but also stay in touch with what customers really want. And, and uh, also, are you the right person for that? So, you know, I started Red Balloon because I wanted a lifestyle, clearly got that wrong. And, um, it, you know, that was actually ended up being the how we do business, we're a flexible workplace. But um, I had to do a lot of work on myself as a leader of what am I good at, what, do, what skills do I need to have around me that I don't have to actually create an enterprise. And some people I would argue, and, and you know, we did see a lot of pictures of the Shark Tank, some people are not destined to be leaders of a business, but they might be great inventors. It, it's interesting because there are lessons from the Red Balloon story that are still relevant, and there's, there's also things that are completely irrelevant. And the point is that in those days, there was no such thing as social media. So, um, and the only way really that we promoted online was through portals or through email marketing. So, you know, clearly the world has evolved. Uh, the other thing is access to cloud-based computing and uh, to uh, customers is so much easier but also more competitive than it ever was before. So you can now come up with almost an idea, test a concept before you even deliver to a minimal viable product. And that was absolutely unavailable to me at Red Balloon. Like we had to build it. Uh, spend the $25,000 of hard-earned savings, build it, and then hope that they would come. And as you know, hope is not a strategy. So we live in a very different world. But what I would say is relevant, doesn't matter what uh, generation or age that you start your business, is that what is your deep passion? Like, what is it that you want to do? And what energizes you as a leader? 
Secondly is your own positivity. Like, you know, do you see the world as uh, a good place or a bad place? Do you see it as an opportunity or not? And um, positivity is incredibly important because as an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter what happens to us. The next day we just need to get up with a smile. And we're like clown punching bags. You punch us really hard, we have to get up the next day. And every true entrepreneur I know, no matter what happens to them and how bad that day is, at the end of the day, you see a little glint in their eye and they go, oh, I wonder what will happen tomorrow. You know, they, they have to put it behind them and move on. The third thing is, is about being persistent. And that's a bit, you know, as I was saying, you just got to keep getting up. But if it was easy, everybody would do it. And it is not for everybody. Uh, and the fourth thing is, is the why do you do it? The purpose, the who, whose problem are you solving? How are you making the world a better day? If you are going into business to make money, Money is to business what breathing is to life. You, uh, we breathe, we don't, you didn't get up this morning to count the number of breaths you're gonna to have today, but without them, you're not gonna be here at the end of the day. And it's the same for business. Business, um, money is the enabler. It is the scorecard, but it is not why we do it. There is lots of ways of making money, and one of them is to have a job and be paid regularly with a salary. So I would argue that the why, the purpose is very important. And when people say to me, oh, I, I want to make a lot of money, I go, well, start again, because that's not going to be it. Now, the, the passion piece is about what you want. The purpose piece is about why you're solving a world's problem. Why are you making the world a better place? Why would anybody align with you? Why would they agree with you? And that comes from customer stories. I found my purpose in listening to what customers had to say about Red Balloon. And anytime I'm feeling a bit down, or I'm like, why well, don't I do this? I just read some more customer stories. And I, I remember, I remember the impact that we're having on customers. How easy we made it to give a great gift. Or how um, the moments that people connect, connected on ticking something off on their bucket list. That to me is really fulfilling. And rewarding. So there is a difference between passion, which is a very internal thing, what am I energised by, versus what is the world, how am I making the world, is an external thing for purpose. So it's, I feel very privileged that um, I get to see innovation at its just core. And some of them literally, you know, they've dragged something out of the garage and now they're putting it in front of us. And I'd been um, an angel investor through scale for a, a few years and we probably saw about four pitches a month for 10 months. So let's say maximum 40 a year, maximum we'd see 40 a year. And you know, during this process, I saw more than 100 in a very short space of time. So I feel very privileged, and also the sheer breadth. You know, often we think of innovation in the concept of technology, and yet one of the most exciting uh, investments that I've made during the program is the HEGS, which is the PEGS. And it will be a great Australian uh, export, it, well it already is. So innovation doesn't always come from technology, and sometimes we, we, you know, people say to me, oh, I don't really know computers, I don't know how I'm going to innovate. Well, what about looking at something completely else? And the other thing is you can get great advice. So, you know, he, got it, he had the idea, he got an industrial designer to design it, and, you know, a peg with, peg with hooks. So I think um, often we limit ourselves because we say innovation happens in a certain way, when actually it can happen anywhere. So I feel really privileged. Um, I'm very excited to see what Series 2 ends up doing. I'm sure we're going to have a Series 2. But people keep talk, telling us it's such a great program and they keep watching. It, I think it's great for Australia. I think it's great for young people. And you know, the, I think the oldest person we had coming into pictures was 69. So you think about that and you go, that means innovation happens anywhere and everywhere. And it might well happen for retirees. They might go, you know what, I worked all my life there. I've got all of that experience. And now it's time to start something for me because I'm financially secure. I can do something I really want to do. So I'm excited. We're not ages with this. Innovation happens everywhere and anywhere. You know, I think it's okay being a startup in Australia. I don't, don't think you're necessarily a disadvantage straight away. It's actually when you start growing that you get disadvantage on a, on a global scale. Um, whether it be how you engage your employees with option schemes or, you know, it's, it's difficult and it's hard. The other thing is that we have so many taxes and so many compliance and obligations. I know why they do them, but really we have local, state and federal taxes. And, um, and at, as soon as you start to grow, you must comply with all of those things or it's gonna be very embarrassing very quickly. So uh, the sheer responsibility that a founder has to protect their reputation by making sure they do all of the work, everything, 
you, you just you can't avoid it and that means you're not focused on your customers so that support mechanism of getting all of those things right uh, is very important and, and it, so it's actually when you start to grow you get to a disadvantage and that it's not as easy so and, and you know even in the startup community once you start making you know more than a million dollars off you go out you go you're off you're done and um, you know a million dollars actually in turnover nowadays it's not it's not very much at all you know, doesn't mean you're there yet Startups in Australia have a big future, uh, but, but the louder the conversation, the better it is, and how great CBIT are having a whole section on start startups, that's, that's the first part, you know, is making sure that startups are on the stage. You know, when I, when I started my business, I did it at home, I didn't even know there was anybody else like me, and I'm sure there was plenty of people. So networks, connection, education, information, all support the ecosystem.